Rust on the web is constantly getting better. Compared to just a few short years ago, we now have a whole suite of crates allowing us to build production-ready applications for the web. One of these crates is Tonic, which provides a Rust implementation of gRPC. And having played with it for a little while, I can confidently say that it makes gRPC stupidly simple when it comes to Rust. It earns this prestigious classification through the use of some well-thought-out features. Features such as automatic protobuf compilation whenever you build your code, simplified importing through macros, compile time checking of your implementation as compared to your gRPC contract, and perhaps one of the greatest features I've seen in a gRPC implementation, web support with about three lines of code. To show all of these features in action, let's go ahead and build something with it. To get started, first create a new project using Cargo. This project is going to be a simple calculator app using gRPC and Tonic under the hood. In order to do this, we're going to need to add Tonic and a couple of other dependencies to our project. Therefore, go ahead and open up the cargo.toml in your favorite text editor. Once inside, add in the following line to set Tonic as the first dependency of our project. As Tonic is built on top of the Tokyo stack, we'll also need to add this as well. Below this, define an entry for the prost crate, which is used to serialize and deserialize into protobuf. Lastly, we have one final dependency to add at this stage, which is Tonic build. However, this goes in a different section called build dependencies. This section is used to define the dependencies for any build scripts we might have. In our case, we're going to set up a build script that will compile our protobuf whenever our project is built. Before we add that in, let's first create our protobuf definition. To do so, first create a new directory called proto, which contains a file called calculator.proto inside. This file is going to contain all of the protobuf definition for our calculator service. Once it's created, go ahead and open it up. First add in the following line to define the syntax as proto3, and below it set the package name, which in this case is calculator. Underneath this, we can define our calculator service, and then define our add method inside using the following code. This method takes a calculation request message as its input and returns a calculation response. The calculation request message wraps two integers, a and b, whilst the calculation response message wraps a single integer called result. That wraps up our protobuf definition for the moment. If you're not entirely sure what's going on here, then I have another video that goes into this protobuf in a little more detail, which I would recommend watching. With our protobuf defined, now we can move on to the fun stuff, code generation. In order to do this, we first need to install the protobuf compiler onto our system. On macOS, you can do this using Homebrew, and on Linux, you can use whatever flavor of package manager your distro provides. With the protobuf compiler installed, we can now go ahead and add in our build script that I mentioned before. To do so, create a new file in the root of the project called build.rs. Once created, open it up and add in the following lines. Inside of the main function, we're using the compile protos method of the tonic build package, passing in the path to our calculator's protobuf definition. This is all it takes in order for us to compile our protobuf whenever we build our project. Compared to other languages, tonic makes this seriously simple. With our code now being generated, we're ready to move on to setting up our calculator service. To do so, head on over to the main.rs file inside of your source directory. The first thing we want to do inside of this file is import the compiled protobuf into our code. To do this, let's first create a module of proto in order to namespace our generated code. Then, inside of this module block, use the include proto macro from the tonic crate in order to import our calculator package, which is the name we gave to the package inside of our calculator.proto. With our protobuf included, we can now go ahead and create our actual service. To do so, we need to create a new type in order to implement the services methods. In our case, this is going to be the calculator service struct. In order for the struct to implement the methods of our RPC service, we need to import the services trait from our protobuf definition. We can do this with a use declaration, importing the calculator trait from the proto module. This trait was created by Tonic and represents the same interface we have in our protobuf definition for our calculator service. Whilst we're here, we may as well add a declaration for the calculator server as well. With our trait imported, let's go ahead and implement it for our calculator service type. Because Tonic uses Tokyo under the hood, that means that the traits contain asynchronous methods. Therefore, we need to use the Tonic async trait macro on our implementation. With that done, we can go ahead and now implement the add method that our trait expects. This method is called with a Tonic request that encapsulates a calculation request message from our protobuf definition. The return type of this method is a result, which either returns a Tonic response, which encapsulates a calculation response from our protobuf, or it returns a Tonic status in the event of an error. 
For the function implementation, it's rather simple. To pull out our input message by reference, we can use the getRef method on our request type. Then we can craft a calculation response with the result being the sum of input A and input B. Then we can wrap this response in a tonic response, which in turn will wrap in an OK. With that, our service is complete. The next thing to do is to get it running. To do so, head on down to the main function and turn it into an asynchronous Tokyo runtime, returning a result. Next, we'll specify the address we want our server to run on, which is going to be on our IPv6 loopback at port 50,051. Next, we'll create an instance of our calculator service, and then add in the following lines, which creates a new tonic server using the server builder, wraps our service in a calculator server and adds it to the builder, and then listens on our IPv6 address. Lastly, you'll need to add a use declaration for the tonic transport server. With that, our initial service should be ready to run. Let's go ahead and test it. First, run your code by using the cargo run command. If everything was built correctly, you shouldn't see any errors. With our server running, we now need a way to send a gRPC request to it. My preferred tool for doing this on the command line is gRPC curl, which is a CLI tool that has a very similar interface to curl, but works for gRPC. You can install this as per the instructions on their documentation. Once it's installed, we can then send a request to our gRPC server using the following command. Let's take a moment to break it down. The first flag we're passing is the plain text flag, which tells the client to not use TLS. Next is the dash proto option, which tells the command where to find our protobuf definition. This is needed by the client in order to interact with the service. Next is the dash D flag, which is passing in our request data in the form of JSON. This will be serialized into a protobuf message by the client, and in this case represents the calculation request message in our protobuf definition. Next is the server's URL followed by the server's RPC method, which in our case is the add method of the calculator service found in the calculator package. If I go ahead and execute this command, I get the result back of 5, which by my calculation is correct. With that, we've successfully managed to set up our gRPC server and hit it with an actual request. Now's a good time to improve our service by enabling reflection. Reflection is the ability for a service to communicate its gRPC contract to clients, eliminating the need for the client to have the protobuf definition. To enable reflection in Tonic takes a couple of steps. First, we need to add the Tonic reflection crate to our cargo.toml. After that, we need to make a change to our build.rs file in order to compile the reflection descriptors. First, add in the following line for a couple of types in the standard library. Next, we want to create a path from the following environment variable, which is set and used by cargo to place all of the build artifacts in our project. Lastly, add in the following lines, which will compile our protobuf into the file descriptor set. With that, we're ready to move over to our main.rs file in order to add reflection to our gRPC service. To do so, add in the following two lines into our proto module. This loads in the file descriptor set that we just set up to compile in our build script. Next, head down to the main function and add in the following lines of code, which builds a tonic reflection service using the encoded file descriptor set of our calculator service that we just imported. Finally, use the add service method of the builder in order to add reflection to it. Now, if we go ahead and rerun our code, we should be then able to hit it with gRPC curl without needing to provide the protobuf definition. Whilst Reflection simplifies the command line, it works even better when it comes to gRPC UI clients. Take gRPC UI for example. By using Reflection, it shows us all of the services and methods that our server provides, as well as the expected request data for each method. Because of this, Reflection makes it a lot easier to work with internal services when it comes to gRPC. With our server in a good state, now's a good time to start thinking about building out our gRPC client. But before we do that, let me first talk about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. If you're looking to level up your knowledge in computer science, maths, or data science, then Brilliant can help. Brilliant is one of the best ways to learn these subjects in an interactive way, providing bite-sized courses that cover a range of subjects, such as algorithms and data structures, probability, and even coding in Python. If you're looking to level up your skills or even learn something new, Brilliant makes it easy to do so. By selecting the course you wish to take, Brilliant will ask you some questions about where you want to go and what your current skill level is, suggesting the best place for you to start. Recently, I picked up the course on quantum computing in order to better understand this emerging field. Because Brilliant provides this course in bite-sized lessons, I was able to easily progress through this course during my spare time, making it work for my schedule. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer, free for 30 days, visit visit brilliant.org slash dreams or code, or click the link in the description down below. The first 200 to sign up will receive 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. 
A big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. As well as servers, Tonic makes it extremely easy for building out gRPC clients. Let's go ahead and build one for our calculator service. To do so, we need to set up a new binary build target inside of our cargo.toml, which we can do using the following lines. This also adds in a binary target for our server as well. You'll notice that the path for our client binary is pointing to the source client.rs file. Let's go ahead and create it and then open it up. Inside, we want to create a new main function that conforms to the Tokyo runtime. Afterwards, we then can import our generated protobuf using the exact same way we did on our server, with the include proto macro from Tonic. To make the code a little more concise, add in the following use declaration for our calculator client. Then scroll down to the main function. First, define a variable that stores our server's URL. Next, let's create an instance of our calculator client using the connect method, passing in the URL we just created. Afterwards, we can define our request parameters using the calculation request type, and then wrap it in a tonic request. Finally, all we need to do is pass this request object to the add method of our calculator client. And we can then print out the result from the response message. Let's go ahead and execute this code using the cargo run command. And if everything is working correctly, we should get back our expected result. With that, we've managed to set up a gRPC client in just 21 lines of code. The next feature I think worth looking at is how to handle errors when it comes to tonic. In order to do this, we need to add a new RPC method to our protobuf definition, one that can cause an error. Fortunately for us, there's an obvious choice, the divide method. Let's go ahead and add this into our service. By the way, if we now try to build our server code, following this change, we'll actually receive a compilation error. This is because our protobuf is automatically compiled, and the calculator service type inside of our code no longer matches the generated calculator trait. This is one of the features I absolutely love when it comes to Tonic. Let's go ahead and fix this error by implementing our divide method. The function definition and implementation is pretty much the same as our add method, with the only difference being the use of the division operator, instead of adding our two input values together. If we go ahead and run this code, and then send a request to divide the number 10 by 2, we get back the expected result of 5. However, if we then try to send a request dividing 10 by 0, we receive back an error and our server panics. This is because we've attempted to divide by 0. Let's make some changes inside of our divide method to better handle this error. Let's add in the following line to perform a validation check on our divisor value. If the value is zero, then we want to return early whilst providing an error back to the client. This error expects to wrap a type of tonic status, which is used to represent the various status codes you can return with gRPC. The applicable status code in this case is invalid argument, which we can generate using the following function. This function also expects a string, which will be passed down to the client as an error message. Now, if we run this code and send up another request to divide by zero, instead of our application panicking, we receive a response with the invalid argument status code and a message telling us we can't divide by zero. When it comes to building services in Rust, state can sometimes be a little tricky to handle. In the case of Tonic, however, it's yet again rather simple. Let's add state into our service by implementing a request counter, which will track the number of requests made to our calculator service. To do so, we first need to define our state type. This type is an unsigned 64-bit integer wrapped in a Tokyo sync read-write lock, which in turn is wrapped by an STD sync arc. This provides us a thread safe value, which we're able to access and mutate inside of our services methods. Next, let's add an instance of this state type into our calculator service. Then we'll add a new method in order to increment this counter in a thread safe manner. I'm also going to add a print statement here in order to visually see the counter incrementing. All that remains is to call this function in both the add and divide method of our calculator service. With that, our counter is now incrementing whenever we send a request to the service. However, in a real-world application, you probably want to have another method to obtain this using gRPC. To do this, let's create a new service called admin in our protobuf definition. Inside of this service, let's add a new RPC method called getRequestCount, and then define our request and response messages as follows. With that, our protobuf is yet again ready to go, without us needing to compile anything by hand. If we jump on over to our main.rs file, we can start to implement this service. First, add in the following use declaration for both the admin trait and admin server. Next, define a new struct called admin service, which will contain a property of our state. Then we can begin implementing the admin trait. For the implementation of the getRequest method, first obtain the count from the state using a read lock, followed by returning it as a counter response message to our client. Next, we can create an instance of this service and then add it to our gRPC server. The final thing we need to do is to make sure both our calculator and admin service are operating off the same instance of a shared state. 
To do this, let's create a new instance of the state in our main function, and then provide an instance of each service using the clone method. Now, when we run our code, we're able to pull out the request count whenever we want using the getRequestCount method of the admin service. With that, we've managed to add state to our gRPC server. The next feature of Tonic we're going to look at are interceptors, which allow you to add simple middleware to both your services and client implementations. To demonstrate this, we're going to add a very simple interceptor to our admin service in order to check authentication in the requests headers. To do so, let's first add in the following use declarations to make our code a little more concise. Then we need to create our interceptor function, which has the following interface. Inside of this function, let's define our expected token type and then pull out the authorization token from the requests metadata. If it exists, we'll then compare it to our token and return an OK with our request if they both match. This will enable our request to proceed to the service. If the request does not contain any authorization metadata or the token check fails, then we'll return an error with a tonic status instead. This status will be returned to the client and the request will be prevented from continuing. Now to make use of this interceptor, head on down to where we construct our admin server and change the new method to be a with interceptor method instead passing in the same admin service, but also passing in the interceptor as well. Now when we run this code and attempt to send a request to our admin service, we'll receive back an unauthenticated status code if we attempt to do so without the correct authorization header. When we send a request with the correct header, then we receive the expected result. This is pretty great, but I have to say it's probably one of the weakest parts of Tonic that I've seen. Unfortunately, the interceptor interface does not support any asynchronous operation, and therefore only supports very simple use cases. In order to use more powerful middleware, it's recommended to use Tower instead. The documentation gives some examples on how to do this. Additionally, we're also going to make use of a Tower middleware layer in our next feature. The last and certainly not least feature I want to demonstrate is the ability to easily support gRPC web without the need to run a proxy server such as Envoy. To do so, we need to add another two crates to our project, Tonic Web and Tower HTTP. Make sure to use the same version as I am and to enable the cores feature for the Tower HTTP crate. Then heading over to the main function in our main.rs file, add in the following line to enable HTTP1 support on our Tonic server. Next, we need to enable cores for our web app to communicate with our gRPC server. To do so, let's add in the cores middleware from the tower HTTP crate as a layer for our server using the following code. This line enables a permissive configuration for cores, which is fine for us to develop with, but in a production environment, you'll want to set a more restrictive configuration. The last change to make is to wrap our calculator service in the enable function of the tonic web package. With that, we're now able to connect to our service using gRPC web. In order to demonstrate this, I've created a front-end web project you can use to test this out. To use it, it, first clone it down onto your system, then run the npm install and npm run dev commands. You can then access this web app on localhost 5173. If everything is set up correctly, you can then enter numbers in the two input fields, and then press the add button to send a request to our server, which updates the result with the response. All of this is done using protobuf and gRPC. Honestly, this feature is perhaps the most stupidly simple way that I've seen gRPC web be implemented. If you check out the documentation for gRPC web, they give you instructions on how to set it up for use with Envoy. And yeah, there's nothing simple about this, especially when compared to the three lines it took us. With that being said, there's still a couple of improvements I'd love to see come to Tonic, with the most notable one being async interceptors. During my research, I did find this project which does provide an implementation. However, I didn't find it perfect and I'd still love to see a version come to the framework itself. Even without this, however, I'm still rather impressed by Tonic, and it makes setting up a gRPC service stupidly simple. Still, I'd love to know your thoughts. Is Tonic something you're interested in trying, or are you still playing around with gRPC yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, a big thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.